same time addressing why we're here which is stereotypes and breaking the stereotypes you know how Greece looks in a crisis and cliches and this whole day has been about bringing another side of Greece like the creative side the, the good stuff that's come out during the crisis um, so I'm trying to make my material match that ladies and gentlemen the one and only Katarina Vrana who's your host tonight Hello. Ah. Hello. Hi, South Bank. How are you doing? Oh, look at you trying to be all. Oh. Um, can I just check, first of all? First of all, hello, I'm Katerina. I'm Greek. Yay, give me money. Um, so, <laughs> straight off the bat, out there. Um, I just want to check um, how many Greeks in the audience? Hands up. Look at you, the little loud ones. Um, and how many Brits in the audience? Woo! Trying, good. I like it, I like it. Um, I did a show in Edinburgh this year, and I always like to see uh, what nationalities are in the audience. And I said, any Greeks, give me a cheer, and they'd go, ah! And one night I said, Brits in the room, give me a whoop, whoop, and all of them went, no. <laughs> we do not whoop, whoop. Do you not know us, woman? We do not do that. Um, so I'm quite excited. Do we have any random national... When I say random, non-Greek... Non <laughs> Straight in there. Um, do we have any other nationalities in? Non-Greeks, non-Brits? Brazil. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Brazil! La, 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 la. <clears throat> Good. Hello, Brazil. Who else? Finland. Finland! Well, you're a treat, aren't you? Hello, Finland. Anyone else? US. US. Sorry? Serbia. Oh, Serbia. I know how to swear about your mum. Um, <laughs> but we won't do that right now. Hello, Serbia. This is very exciting. I heard US from somewhere over there. Oh, my God. Thank you for coming. Um, so it's lovely. Oh, so we're all here. Um, tell you what. I think there's enough nationalities, right? If we get bored, we stop it and we do a Eurovision Song Contest. Um, no? Um, so thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm so excited to be hosting this. It's such an honor to be asked to, to do this. Um, I know it's called Katerina's Crisis Cabaret, but just to clarify, it's not a cabaret because I'm going through a crisis. Um, I mean, at the moment I am breaking up and I'm moving house, but I don't throw a big to-do shebang at the South Bank every time something changes in my life. Uh, <laughs> call up the Purcell room and go, I'm moving house, I need to do a show. Um, this, uh, and, and I know that the initials spell KKK. <laughs> but it's not that kind of show. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm, it's such an honor to be doing this. I'm so happy to be doing this. Um, it's such a brilliant initiative, um, I find, this whole day of Greece is the Word, just to showcase Greek creativity and uh, the Greek culture behind the crisis, because it's all crisis, 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 crisis. Um, which can be a bit tiresome, especially if you're a Greek person living abroad, where you're treated like an expert on the crisis. <laughs> like, I know, like people come up to me and go, oh my God, Katerina. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I don't know. 
I live here. I don't know. <laughs> Do you, shall we read a newspaper together and find out? <laughs> oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> ah. Um, <laughs> and there's this thing where, uh, like, the, the problem is that um, the, in, in, in covering the crisis, well, with people who ask about the crisis, um, a lot of them usually have a preconceived idea of why this is happening. And all they want is a Greek person to confirm it so they can then turn around and go, ah, oh, you know, this is happening to the Greeks because they're retarded and lazy. Nah, I can say that because Katerina agreed. What? No, I never said anything like that. Um, and it's one of the problems when, uh, when, like, the news concentrates on stereotypes so much, on, like, cliches, because the news covering the crisis at the moment tends to cover um, two well, not to cover, tends to concentrate on two stereotypes. One is the older stereotype of the lazy, rich, tax-evading Greeks. And then there's the newer stereotype of the poor, downtrodden, suffering, rioting Greeks. And these two dominate the news to an extent that, again, people come up to me and go, oh my God, Katerina, I saw in the news people rioting and people eating from bins. Is your family okay? <laughs> now, my family's not eating from bins. But the moment I say that, the response is, is that because you've been tax evading all these years and saved the money? Ah! It's, it's not one or the other. It really isn't. There's, um, those two represent maybe 10% of the Greek population. The rest of the population is 90%, and it never gets covered by the news. Now, this is because, A, it's, we're a paradoxical people. We're, we, we can be a little bit retarded. Um, <laughs> in the nicest way. But we also are a very strange people. We combine things that should never go together. For example, we're incredibly hospitable and ridiculously racist at the same time. I don't know how. Baffles me. Um, yes, yes, we are very clever. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Um, and I, I, I can't explain this. The best way I can explain this is, uh, we love it when you visit, we hate it when you stay. Um, and uh, last year, when the, the crisis was kind of peaking, um, my popularity peaked as well, because I was gigging between, ooh, change of lights, hmm. Um, my popularity also peaked, because I was gigging between Greece and the UK, in both Greek and English, and the BBC gave me a call, and they said, Katerina, would you like to be on TV? And I was like, yeah, baby, make mama a star! Um, and they said, no, no, we want you to come and discuss the crisis. <laughs> I hate discussing the crisis. But TV is TV, so I went. Now, um, <laughs> I was on this program on BBC One called This Week. Uh, if you don't know that program, it's a kind of a news magazine of a program. There's a host, Andrew Neil, and two politicians, and they invite guests to discuss the news of the day in, in a light-hearted manner. Um, and it always starts with a clip of the guest doing something they would usually do um, around London. In my case, they filmed me going to a Greek grocery store to buy feta. Because, <laughs> you know, God forbid you leave me alone for five minutes in London. I'm like, feta! Um, so... Um, after they showed the clip, um, I came into the studio and sat down, have a discussion with Andrew Neil and the two politicians. In my case, the two politicians were Michael Portillo, who's an ex-conservative MP, and Diane Abbott, who's a bitch. Um, <laughs> I went there. Um, so, uh, true story. And um, so I sit on the sofa and we have this discussion about Greece. And I tried, I tried to give as much of an objective point of view as I could about what the situation is like for the average Greek person. Now, this was a 12-minute interview, then it finished, and the assistant producer came up to me and said, Katrina, that was lovely, well done. Um, I just wanted to let you know, this went out live on BBC One, so you were seen in all of the UK, but it also went out live on BBC World, so they saw you in all of Europe, in all of Africa, Asia, the States, Latin America. Would you like to see the Twitter feed to see what the people of the world thought about you live on TV? I said, no, I'm good, thank you, bye! Um, and she grabbed my hand so I couldn't escape, um, and she made me read the Twitter feed. Now, I had spent 12 minutes live on air, which is quite a long timeline for Twitter, trying to be as objective as I could and to give an objective um, picture of what the situation is like for the average Greek person. 95% of the Twitter feed went exactly like this. <clears throat> oh my God, she's got so much hair! <laughs> I'm not listening. 
listening to a word she says, look at that fucking hair. Someone tweeted, it's growing before my eyes. And then the comparison started. Someone went, oh my God, she totally looks like Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. No, 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 Slash from Guns N' Roses. No, no, Rebecca Brooks from News of the World. Fuck off, right? If you don't know who Rebecca Brooks is, she's the ex-editor of News of the World when the taping scandal broke. She's Rupert Murdoch's right fist. That woman has done more damage to curly hair since Colonel Gaddafi. <laughs> Say what you want about Gaddafi, the man flew the flag for frizz. End genocide, but these things often go together. Um, now, at the end of my uh, interview, uh, the host, Andrew Neil, turned to me and said, the problem with Greece, Katerina, is that it's uh, hemorrhaging um, money and resources because the best and brightest people are leaving the country. And I said, I know, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you so much for laughing, because they didn't. <laughs> so I looked like a demented megalomaniac. <laughs> and I had to backtrack live on TV. I said, I'm not saying I'm the best. I am. Um, and then Andrew Neal, who if you're unaware is 101, um, leaned over, touched my knee and went, oh, but we think you are the best, Katerina. <laughs> ah. But then I found out he owns his own helicopter, so I fucked him. Now, um, <laughs> no, I make joke, I make joke. Stop it, no, I did not, I did not. Um, I did this joke in Greece and my parents were in the audience and I said, this is a very awkward joke to do with your parents in the audience. And then my mum, voice clear as a bell, went, I don't care if you fucked him, darling, he has a helicopter. <laughs> so we've banned my mum from coming to my gigs, uh, is what we've learnt there. Um, it's just very indicative of um, stereotypes and how they're perceived and um, how we're, we're perceived, like how Greeks are perceived at the moment in the UK. Um, I also need to clarify, I feel I need to clarify this every time I perform. I am completely Greek. I am Greek, Greek, Greek. Uh, feta flows through my veins. Um, I just, I have no idea why I speak English like this. <laughs> because I was born in Greece, I was raised in Greece, both my parents are Greek, I went to school there, I came over to study, ended up saying because of the weather, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> and I asked my mum, I said, mum, how come when I speak English, I sound awesome? <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the family sound like bloody foreigners. And my mum went, ah, darling, when you were born, you were so very, very ugly. I'm like, really, mom? It's like, no, darling, it's fine now. But when you popped out, your father and I took one look at you and thought, no! This one will need personality. <laughs> and language helps, my darling. I wanted English. I wanted French. Your father, he wanted English. And then my dad went, and I wish this was a joke. My dad went, yes, Katerina, I wanted English because I had a plan, a glorious plan. Genius, come closer, I tell you. British royalty marries very ugly women. Genius! Genius! Go find your prince! I'm like, Dad, no, have you seen those boys? <laughs> William has been bald all his life, and Harry... Okay, Purcell Room, look, I'd fuck Harry. Now, um... <laughs> You're getting to know me more than you thought, I know. Um, I don't know what's happened. I used to like, like, in Greece, I used to like tall, swarthy men with one eyebrow and chest hair so thick you can hold on to it. Um, <laughs> I've lived in the UK now for 12 years. My taste now includes the pale British man. <laughs> you know, the see-through ones. Are they there? Are they not? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Love them. So cute. I mean, you can't take them out in the sun, but you know, oh, it's okay. Um, if you do, they explode. Um, so basically my parents grabbed any native English speakers who were in Greece at the time, made them talk to me for three hours every day. Ta-da! I now speak the England very best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming to Purcell on South Bank for funny. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Lovely. Um, as I said, and I, I have been here 12 years, and the thing that makes me stand out the most as a foreigner here, because my accent kind of hides the fact that I'm a foreigner, is, is, is the hair. I, I have no control over this. I do apologize, Purcell Room. This is how it's gonna be. Uh, it might get bigger throughout the evening. Um, I'm just warning you now. If it comes at you, sir, I'm sorry. Um, just duck, I'll pull it back, it'll be fine. I have to explain that, you know, in Greece, this is normal. Um, 
you know, in Greece you see this kind of hair on so many football players. Um, <laughs> in the UK it's a sightseeing opportunity. <laughs> People come up, want to touch it, take photos, sing to it. Um, it's great. People shout at me in the street. I get heckled in clubs for this. Um, the worst are American tourists. Sorry. Um, because American tourists um, have this amazing thing where they combine this natural sense of curiosity with no shame. And they come up from behind, don't tell me they're there, put their hand right into the back of my head and go, oh my God, it feels exactly like I thought it would. Mm. It's not a wig. <laughs> it's my hair. And things get trapped in it all the time, like earrings and stuff. I mean, flies come here to die. Um, <laughs> sad. The weirdest thing I've ever found trapped in the back of my hair was an ex-boyfriend. Um, <laughs> he'd never left, stop it. Um, so, yeah. Um, and after having lived here uh, for 12 years, I, I absolutely love living here. I love living here so much. Um, I mean, I love Greece as well, but I love living here. There's so many lovely things that the Brits do that are just so, oh, British. Um, and one of my favorite things um, is how they get angry. <laughs> because when, I'll tell you, this is one of my favorite things. Um, I have a bugbear when it comes to stereotypes. I hate the fact that people are either too easy to dismiss stereotypes or use them to describe the whole situation. And they're neither. Stereotypes are just a guideline. You shouldn't dismiss them out of hand because they're, there, they're based on kernels of truth. But they won't give you the entire image. They won't give you the whole picture. You have to dig deeper. Um, for example, before I left Greece, I was told constantly by Greek people, ah, you know, the British, they never get angry. Now, I've lived here 12 years. I know that you get angry. It's just that the way you get angry doesn't register with anyone from a Mediterranean culture. <laughs> it's, um, you know, because British rage comes out, wafts around a bit, and then goes back in. Do you know what I mean? Like if someone jumps the queue, it's like, well, clearly that's not the way to do it. Someone should say something. It won't be me, but I hope someone says something because I'm very annoyed about this. Oh, I'm sure. If someone stands to the left of an escalator instead of walking down, it's exactly the same thing. Well, clearly that's a tourist. I'm going to nudge but say nothing, nudge but say nothing, nudge but I hope someone says something because I'm very pissed off about this. <laughs> and there's this whole mime that happens when a parcel is late. It's one of my favorites. You know, the whole of, hmm. <laughs> Thank you! And all that rage kind of sits here and uh, finally finds expression in what you guys call a strongly worded letter. <laughs> I had never seen one of these in my life. You know, dear sir, I regret to inform you, I am most upset. I hope you and your family are well. Best regards, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Um, my favorite example of British rage was given to me by a friend of mine um, who's English. Um, he's so English, he should be part of the flag. Um, he was stuck in an overground train. Uh, that, you know, the train stopped in the middle of nowhere, fields, sheep, that kind of thing. Um, the announcement came on saying, ladies and gentlemen, there seems to be a problem. We need to keep you here for five minutes. Please bear with us. They kept them in the train, stationary, for an hour and a half. My friend relating the story to me said, Katerina, an hour and a half. I was so angry, I was livid. I was so livid, I was tempted to complain. <laughs> Were you tempted to complain? Were you tempted to let loose? That does not register with us. Do you know what I mean? Like back home, there is no strongly worded letter, specifically in Greece, there wouldn't have been a train. Um, <laughs> If you keep the Greeks enclosed anywhere they don't want to be for more than five minutes, all hell breaks loose. Especially on a ferry boat on a way to an island, never come between a Greek and their holidays. <laughs> like the ferry boat has barely touched the island and that amazing announcement comes on, you know? Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for disembarkation. <laughs> Please wait five minutes for the doors to open. What? You keep us in here cooped up like animals for five minutes like animals! Animals! <laughs> you think this is how a European country should operate? You think this is Europe? This is shit! Where is the manager? I demand to speak to the manager! Please, sir, sit down.
done. You're becoming hysterical. Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? Re? Who are you to tell me what to do? I was trying to be polite. I fuck your politeness. I fuck your mother. Whoa! It takes five seconds to go from zero to I fuck your mother. And Greeks use this all the time. I fuck your mother. No one gets as fucked as Greek mothers do. They're the best laid women on the planet. They shouldn't be as anxious as they are. Um, but I genuinely don't know what the correct response to that is. Like if someone comes up to you in a boat in Greece and goes, you, I fuck your mother. What are you supposed to go? No, really? Ma, what are the chances? No, 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 wait, 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 come, 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 come. Are you saying of all the boats in all of Greece, you walk into the one containing and pick an argument with the son of the lady that you're fucking? <laughs> Ma, come on. Costas, my mother has told me the best about you, eh? <laughs> and the other problem with this is, it's a, it's a swear sentence that's never said by someone you'd want to say it to you. Because I don't know about you, but if the Sultan of Brunei or Bill Gates comes up to me and goes, you, I fuck your mother. I'm like, ah, daddy! <laughs> you're home! Ding, 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 ding. That's my I have a private jet dance I've been practicing. <laughs> Brazil, la, 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 la. Ding, 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 ding. Too much? Okay, back again. Ding, 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 ding. And I wish there was, I wish there was a middle way between those two rages because the Greek is unnecessary and this, gives you cancer. So, um, <laughs> I wish there was a way to temper it, to find, I'm, I'm just afraid that the middle way between those two will end up being, dear sir, I regret to inform you, I fucked your mother. <laughs> kind regards, Mr. Smith. Cause that's a strongly worded letter <laughs> to say. Um, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have an amazing evening ahead of us. It's going to be absolutely amazing. We have some brilliant Greek music. We've got poetry. We've got a play. Um, we've got a graphic live artist that's going to design to the sounds of Rebetiko. Um, I'm so excited. Um, I want to shout, are you ready? And then I want you to go absolutely batshit crazy. Um, are you up for that? Yeah. Okay, good. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Yeah. Yes! So let's kick this off. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the amazing Pablos Malas and Musutu! They're so pretty. Ella. from Greece and the, the comments that we hear we're hearing from musicians in Greece is that obviously a lot of the days uh, performance days have re have been reduced so uh, instead of playing three or four times a week they're playing for less and they're playing for less money and there are musicians who have an interest to come abroad uh, I decided to come in London uh, because London is going to give me the opportunity for more activities in music because we know the situation in Greece now it's not very easy to to find work uh, and I hope this this concert to to give a message with with, with it to the to our politician and make things better as soon as you get the personal perspective on it then it completely changes the way the music feels having gone from listening to lots of CDs and YouTube videos and thinking why wow, this music is is just amazing then as soon as you meet the people who play it then you understand what the the social meanings of it are um, the way the community works behind it how it functions in all parts of the, the culture and just day-to-day -day life obviously the crisis is part of our art and it comes out in various ways it might come out in a buzuki solo or it might come out in some certain lyrics or it might come out in just the way we feel when we play for an audience. Uh, it's obviously everything is interconnected. I don't think we are like at the stage like the old Rebettes who used to write songs for the social life, you know, and 
writing about the poverty that we're living in because I think we, in general we're much much richer than what the Rebettas used to be and we live in much better conditions than they used to so there's a lo long way before we reach the level that they were when they were actually poor um, I think if you're a musician you just need to be hardcore and be able to manage situations and be, be able to be self-contained and just go through any crisis because that's your job anyway some of the gigs are crises themselves so you have to be able to go through a crisis in the same way that you have to go through a difficult gig Good. Uh, last question for you uh, hello <coughs> I think today's probably the fullest or one of the fullest Musu 2 is Musu 2 after Nu Apokino Bokino Optuali the most amazing musicians uh, special thanks to Yorgos Bezirianidis for coming from Thrace, from Evros. He's just here for a week. Yeah. So first tune is called Mandilatos. It's the handkerchief tune from Thrace.
The next one is from Mitilini. Anathema Tonetio.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please keep the applause going for Victoria Heslop, Eva Simatu, and Nikos Bursanidis. Over the next 10 minutes, we're going to celebrate the poetry of three undisputedly great modern Greek poets, Kavafi, Seferis, and Elitis. Two of them had strong connections with Britain, and the third certainly travelled here, and something they all experienced at first hand was exile. Konstantinos Kavafi was born in Alexandria in 1863, but spent much of his childhood in London and Liverpool before eventually returning to Alexandria. He was a perfectionist, keeping only a small proportion of what he wrote, and his themes were the Panhellenic ancient world and homoeroticism. Apolipin o Theos Antonion. The God abandons Antony. San exafna, ora mesanicta acus thi, a oratos theasos na perna, me musices excesies, me fones, tintigisu, pu envidi pia, ta ergasu, pu apetichan, ta siedia ti soisu, pu higan ola planes, mina no feleta frinisis, san etimos apokero, san tharaleos, apoheretta din, din Alexandria pu fevhi. When suddenly, at midnight, you hear an invisible procession pass by with delightful music and voices. Don't grieve for your failing fortunes, your spoiled deeds, the illusion of your life's plan. To mourn is useless. Rather, with foreknowledge and boldness, bid farewell to the departing Alexandria. Προπάντω να μην γελαστείς, μην πεις πως ήταν ένα όνειρο, πως απατήθηκε η ακοή σου, μάτες ελπίδες τέτοιες μην καταδεχτείς. Σαν έτοιμος από καιρό, σαν θαραλέος, σαν που ταιριάζεις σε που αξιώθηκες μια τέτοια πόλη, πλησίασε σταθερά προς το παράθυρο και άκουσε με συγκίνηση, αλλά όχι με τον δηλών τα παρακάλια και παράπονα, ως τελευταία απόλαυση τους ήχους, τα εξαίσια όργανα του μυστικού θεά σου και αποχαιρέτα την, την Αλεξάνδρεια που χάνεις. Above all, don't fool yourself. Don't claim it was just a dream that you heard a lie. Above all, avoid such futile notions as if long prepared and ever courageous, acting as one who deserves such a city. Make your way to the window and listen closely with your heart, not with cowardly pleas and protests. Hear as a last pleasure those sounds, the delightful music of the invisible procession, and bid farewell to the Alexandria you are losing. Yorgos Seferis was born in 1900 near Smyrna in Asia Minor, and moved to Athens when he was 14 and then to Paris in 1918 to study at the Sorbonne. He had a long and successful diplomatic career and was Greek ambassador to the United Kingdom from 1957 to 61. In 1963, he was the first Greek to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. The Exile. My old friend, what are you looking for? After years abroad, you've come back with images nourished under foreign skies, far from your own country. I'm looking for my old garden. The trees come to my waist, and the hills resemble terraces. Yet, as a child, I used to play on the grass under great shadows, and I would run for hours, breathless, over the slopes. My old friend, rest. You'll get used to it little by little. Together we will climb the paths you once knew. We will sit together under the plane tree's dome. They'll come back to you little by little, your garden and your slopes. I'm looking for my old house, the tall windows darkened by ivy. I'm looking for the ancient column known to sailors. How can I get into this coop? The roof 
comes to my shoulders, and however far I look, I see men on their knees as though saying their prayers. My old friend, don't you hear me? You'll get used to it little by little. Your house is the one you see, and soon friends and relatives will come knocking at your door to welcome you back tenderly. Why is your voice so distant? Raise your head a little, so that I understand you. As you speak, you grow gradually smaller, as though you're sinking into the ground. My old friend, stop a moment and think. You'll get used to it little by little. Your nostalgia has created a non-existent country with laws alien to earth and man. Now, I cannot hear a sound. My lost friend has sunk. Strains how from time to time they level everything down. Here, a thousand scythe-bearing chariots go past and mow everything down. Ellen. Helen, μεγάλος πόνος είχε πέσει στην Ελλάδα. Τόσα κορμιά ριγμένα στα σαγόνια της θάλασσας, στα σαγόνια της γης. Τόσες ψυχές δοσμένες στις μιλόπετρες σαν το σιτάρι. Κι οι ποταμοί φουσκώναν μέσα στη λάσπη το αίμα για ένα λινό κοιμάτισμα. Μια νεφέλη, μια σπεταλούδα στην άγμα, το πούπουλο ενός κύκνου για ένα πουκάμισο αδιανό, για μια νελέδη. Great suffering descended on Greece. So many bodies thrown into the jaws of the sea, the jaws of the earth. So many souls fed to the millstones like grain, and the rivers swelling blood in their silt, all for a linen undulation, a bit of cloud, a butterfly's flicker, a swan's down, an empty tunic, all for a Helen. Odysseus Elitis was born in Crete in 1911 and later moved to Athens. He published his first poems in his early 20s with the encouragement of friends such as Yorgos Seferis. Between 1969 and 72, he exiled himself to Paris during the military junta. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1979. Akindinu. Ελπιδοφόρου, ανεμπόδιστου. Τώρα στη βάρκα, όπου κι αν μπεις, άδεια θα φτάσει. Εγώ αποβλέπω σε έναν μακρύ θαλασσινό κεραμικό, με κόρες πέτρινες και που κρατούν λουλούδια. Θα είναι νύχτα κι Αύγουστος, τότε που αλλάζουν τον αστερισμό οι βάρδιες και τα βουνά ελαφρά, γιωμάτα σκοτεινών αέρα, στέκουν λίγο πιο πάνω από τη γραμμή του ορίζοντα ως μέσα εδώ ή εκεί καμένου χόρτου και μια λύπη άγνωστης γενεάς που από ψηλά κάνει ριάκι πάνω στην αποκοιμισμένη θάλασσα. Harmless, hopeful, unhindered day, translated by David Connolly. Now to the boat that should you get in will come empty, I turn my gaze to a long marine cemetery with maidens of stone-bearing flowers. It will be night time and August, the hour constellations change their watch and weightless found mountains filled with dark air float just above the line of the horizon. Smells of burnt grass here and there and a sorrow of unknown lineage that from above forms a stream over the slumbering sea. Please keep the pro 
applause going for David Prudhomme. Φράγκο, Συριάννη, Γλυκιά 
και μαγιά μου έχεις κάνει φράγκο Συριάννη γλυκιά Στην ακρογιαλιά Θα ήθελα να με χορτάσεις Όλο χαδιά και φίλια Θα ήθελα να με χορτάσεις Όλο χαδιά και φίλια Γαλισά και δέλα γράτσια και ας μου έρθει η σηκώπη Γαλισά και δέλα γράτσια και ας μου έρθει η σηκώπη
That's me. That is in the art of memory. Please keep the applause going for Mr. Paul Mason. Hello. Um, hello, I'm Paul Mason, and I'm a journalist who's been covering the Greek crisis uh, since it started for, the, for Channel 4 News now, but for the BBC uh, before that. And I'm just here to do a short, serious bit before uh, Katerina comes on and tells some more jokes about Andrew Neil. Um, <laughs> the uh, four films you're about to see represent just a tip of the iceberg of some amazing documentary filmmaking that's coming out of Greece right now. Two by Greeks with a London connection, two by Brits who spend a lot of time in Greece. But of course, uh, there was one film that didn't get made, and that was Woody Allen's film about Athens. Um, Athens, you know, Woody, Woody of course, was, was rumoured last year to be coming to Athens to make to one of those uh, late period formulaic romantic comedies that he's become famous for. You know the formula where an old guy and his wife, Woody, uh, comes to a... Uh, comes to, a, comes to a, a European capital and they meet their daughter or son who's on a gap year and romantic complications ensue. <laughs> we think it might have gone like this. Darling, I think it's so great that you, you booked his room, rooms here at the Grand Britannia Hotel on Syntagma Square. I mean, I mean, it's a little pricey, but the view of the Acropolis is amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Honey, did you see fog when we let it at the airport? I mean, this is a little thick, don't you think? I mean, it's, it's a crudity, it's crudity is making me nauseous. Um, did we come in the middle of some kind of folk, folk festival? What are those guys doing down there with the crash helmets? I mean, the red flags, I mean, that's so amazing. And, and those guys on the motorbikes, they look like Darth Vader. And what is that dog doing? I mean, what is that dog? Don't do that. Don't do that. Of course, for Woody, there would always be uh, a, a <laughs> for Woody, there would always be a, uh, a, a moment where the romantic leads, played by Owen Wilson and Anne Hathaway, go uh, walking through the most bohemian part of the city at 3 a.m. Excuse me, could you tell us, please, uh, uh, are we in are we in Exarchia Square? Uh, we we've been trying to find this place for the last three hours. What do we do? Well, we're Americans, and, and I work for the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> <laughs> so that film didn't get made, but these four did. So uh, we're nearly at the end. Oh, I know, I'm so sad. I like some of you so much. Um, <laughs> uh, before um, we, we reach the grand finale, oh, there's a grand finale. Um, uh, just a, a couple of things. Um, as I said, um, I, I have been living here for, for 12 years. I, I love this country immensely. Um, I love Greece immensely. I love both immensely. Um, <laughs> But one of the things that I have come bizarrely to love here more than is usual for someone Greek is the weather. <laughs> no, really, humidity does wonders to my skin. I'm 56. Um, <laughs> you didn't laugh enough at that. Um, <laughs> better. Um, no, really, because, I mean, you know, I mean, British people in the room, you know that in other countries, clouds are functional rather than an aesthetic choice. You know this, right? Like in other countries when clouds arrive, people go, ah, oh, clouds, it will rain. <laughs> in the UK, clouds arrive and go, oh, hello, we're here. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> you know, we're not gonna do anything, we're just gonna sit here. <laughs> Maybe go a bit lower, right? It's like in other countries, when clouds arrive, it rains, the heavens open, water falls from heavens, water so thick you cannot see through it. It's like, where is my hummus? I don't know, behind the rain. That lasts two, three hours, then it stops, the sun comes out, we forget about it. 
In the UK, the same amount of water takes 24 hours to come down. Drizzle. And that's what I've come to love, because drizzle is rain being quintessentially British. Right. It's rain going... <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm terribly sorry. I'm coming down. Don't mind me. I won't be in the way. I'm just going to come over here. I won't get anyone wet, I promise. It's going to be absolutely fine. I'm just going to water the... Did I get you wet? Oh, how clumsy of me. I do apologize. I didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to come over here. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to water the plants and I'll be gone. It's fine. Five minutes and I'm going to go. I promise. It's going to be absolutely fine. I'm so sorry. I'm just tippy tapping. Just going. I'll be gone. 24 hours and I'm still here. Hashtag awkward. I didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to come over here. I'm so sorry. No, really, genuinely. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. I do apologize. Ah. I didn't mean, you know, the green, green grass. I mean, you know, it's me. I'm so sorry. I don't, I can't. Oh dear, I'm, it's never, I'm so sorry. I do apologize, I just, I can't. I'm the Hugh Grant of moisture. And, um, and my hair absorbs moisture. <clears throat> it's been raining today, can you tell? Um, so whenever it drizzles, my hair goes <laughs> And a mile radius around me stays completely dry. <laughs> and local school teachers use me as an umbrella for the children. <laughs> shouting, follow the lady who looks like a tree. What? And I look like I've got all of the Jackson 4 on my head. Because he's dead. Now, um, it's, it's a very good joke. Um, very quickly, talking about wet things, I'd just like to discuss British men for a second. Um, thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Um, I thought it was, oh yay, one person did. It's probably the American, they're very loud. Um, woo, USA! Um, no? Okay. Uh, so thank you so much for coming. Um, I'd like to thank the South Bank Center for, for giving us the room. I mean, it's amazing. And the Arts Council, without them, it wouldn't have been possible. And the European Commission. It's amazing that initiatives like this are started by, um, by foreign people. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> please go to Greece on holiday. Uh, so thank you so much. And I would also, I would love to thank Rosie Goldsmith that put all this together. <laughs> Rosie, would you like to come up, please? Katerina, oh, thank you. thank you. Oh, Rosie, flowers. Also, while I'm here, we'd like to thank Mary Katranzu for giving us the lovely dresses we're wearing today. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Rosie put this all together. She's absolutely amazing. You're a legend. Oh, thank you. No. They're lovely. Hold them while you sing. Throw them to... <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to join me in welcoming back on stage Pavlos Melas and Musutu for our final number. There's so many of them. It's like a joke. How many of them can you fit in a van? Cry. 
I have a round of applause for the single audience member who got up and danced, please? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Greece is the word. Good night. The whole thing just came together. There was so much enthusiasm, so much passion, so many people doing so many wonderful things. And as you and we and all, but you know, everybody knows, we did it for very little money, but we did it. And we're really, really proud of it. I just think it was amazing. I, re I, I really mean that. I mean, this is not spin. This is not because they gave me a lovely bunch of flowers. It's because like 25, 30 performers came together, managed to keep it going from you know, 2.30 all afternoon through a media panel, a really serious media, pa media panel about the crisis in Greece, through a two-hour cabaret with no interval. Absolutely amazing. As you can hear, we are packing up. We've got a few minutes before we have to get out of the building. It's the end of a very, very long day. We've had an amazing day, but there's been a very serious message, I think, behind all of this, which is what's going on now in Greece is poetry novels, all that, everybody's writing, people are making music, people are still doing amazing things. It may be reflecting a very serious crisis, but at least it is poetry, at least it's still happening. They may not be publishing enough books and so on. That's what I wanted to do here, was to draw attention to what's being done and so that we can perhaps say, look, translate these books, you know? Um, ask more Greek music musicians to play, you know? Just become aware of other cultures. We're very, very insular in this country. And we need to be aware of what's going on everywhere. Not just about the politics and the economics of Greece, very, very important, but everything else, the culture, the media, everything. I think it worked. I really do.